Chuck Mahawk, everybody. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Woo! Here for awesome talent, beautiful people, and our first fabulous uh, person coming up tonight. I'm using my iPhone so because we're going to start off iPhone. with the fabulous Larissa Lai. And I'm, just give me some patience here. I'm looking in my little iPhone. I've actually known Larissa a lot longer than I. I'm going to say. <laughs> We've known each other a long time, but it doesn't mean I know all of her amazing things because she's this incredible writer that writes amazing things for us to read. And without the writers, which there are many writers here, <laughs> we all love you. Please keep us entertained and busy when we're sitting on buses and hate the world. <laughs> I'm saying that actually in jest because I've, the few times that I've allowed myself to go on buses because I hate them, I, I must just get onto the buses that are like, that have been targeted for Larissa Lai. Because I'll get on the bus and I'll just get to enjoy poetry and motion on the bus. I'll get that poetry, you know, the poetry that you see on the bus. I've been like, thank you, Larissa, you saved my day. I just hated everybody on the bus today, but you, your poetry saved me. <laughs> So um, I've actually read a bunch of my friends' poetry on those. So I think, yeah, more poetry in motion. So she's the author of two novels, When Fox is a Thousand Ye is a Thousand, I always want to say a thousand years, is a thousand, and Saltfish Girl, and two books of poetry, Sybil Unrest with Rita Wong, another fabulous writer in the house. Um, some fans, apparently. <laughs> um, Autumn... What is it? Automation, automaton uh, bio, biographies. Sorry, having trout mobbles right now. Um, <laughs> through the 90s, she was cultural organizer in Vancouver. Now, as an English professor uh, at the University of BC, it's very awesome to see cool teachers in our campuses and kids to schools. So they'll have awesome teachers like Larissa. <laughs> And she teaches courses on race, memory, citizenship, as well as on biopower and the poetics of relation. So I give you Larissa Lai, and please give her a warm light. welcome. Hi, Chika. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cease, for that, that very kind and generous introduction. I've known you for a long time. I met you, I met Cease, I think, before Sinaquil was born. I remember, I think we met the Western Front. Yeah, and I remember one of the first stories um, that Cease ever told me was uh, it was just after Sinaquilla was born. Am I allowed to tell the story? Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> 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 and uh, Cease really needed um, needed a baby carriage, and you know, none of we were all all of us were living on nothing in those days. No one had it. I mean, nobody could afford these fabulous new. Uh, uh, carriages that were just sort of starting to be popular at around that time. And I remember you telling me the story of going into the bay and putting... Zellers, actually. It was Zellers? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I remember the bay, so I've been imagining the bay all these years. Now I've got to change the story in my head. <laughs> okay, so she went into Zellers and she put Sanaquila into the carriage and wheeled it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to um, begin by acknowledging the Musqueam, the, um, the Squamish, and the tsleil uh, people on whose unceded land I'm an uninvited guest. Um, the work that I'm doing in this project, and I hope in my life, uh, I do this work in recognition of Native sovereignty and in solidarity with uh, Indigenous struggles for justice. I'd like to acknowledge um, and thank the Aboriginal Writers Collective for, for inviting me to do this. Uh, especially Michelle uh, and Joanne, who have both known for such a long time and who've been so supportive, as well as some of the new folks I'm meeting, so like Russell and Jonina, Annie Ross, thank you. Um, I've been wanting to do some work ar ar around the Chinese um, smiths and carpenters who came with um, Captain John Mears uh, in 1778, um, ever since the new Chalnuth artist and historian Kike in Ron Hamilton told me about it two years ago. So these were the, apparently, this is uh, what Kike and told me, was that these are the first um, recorded Chinese people to come in contact with indigenous peoples on the Northwest Coast. Uh, and so for this evening, we were asked to engage with the five elements, which put me to mind um, 
uh, of the Taoist system of the five elements, which is a little bit different from the way that we're used to thinking. So the Taoist system actually has five, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, instead of air, earth, fire, and water, right? Um, and there's a whole worldview and a view of the body that's sort of caught up in that. So what I'm trying to do in this poem is to think through the connection between those Chinese smiths and carpenters in relation to the New Chalnuth, Kwakwakawak, Haida, and other indigenous peoples through this top Taoist system of the five elements. We'll see if it works. Um, I'm relying on some documentation. Uh, this stuff doesn't all come out of my head. Uh, most of the documentation, as it often is, uh, is European and American. Um, so what I'm trying to do is find Asian indigenous relation between the lines, not naively, I hope, but with a recognition of power imbalances and the history that follows all that power imbalance um, from this late 18th century moment. I'm trying to do this work respectfully and responsibly, and so I hope that comes across. I hope it comes across. Um, the piece contains some quotations from John Mears's travel journal, uh, Voyages from China to the Northwest Coast of America. I'm gonna try to signal them. Um, I think they'll probably also be quite obvious because the language becomes a bit archaic. Uh, and it should take about six minutes. It's called Iphigenia's Crossing. Wood element, green, and young yang turns the cycle pushing wood through water. Duk chung. Rattle, 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 rattle. Duk, 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 duk chung. Time, latitude north, longitude west, winds, weather, and remarks. T. Hudson's receipt for 203 sea otter skins. A boat, then. Ephigenia Nubiana, 200 tons burthen, self-sacrificing daughter who dies for father and country. Which? It's 1788, virginal Iphigenia, a water-crossing daughter, sacrificing for father and country. Which father? Which country? Crosses the Northern Pacific under command of Mr. Douglas, officer of considerable merit who was well acquainted with the coast of America, meaning Canada to come, our home on native land. Here comes an other metal element, copper bottom, sorry, copper bottomed, Felice, ever faithful. To cross the Northern Pacific Ocean, sailing the long arc of the Sandwich Islands, from Wampoa to Nootka Sound, Captain John Mears at the helm, and passengers Tiana, Prince of Atui, Wini of Hawaii, a boy and a man from Maui, and Komakela, a New Chalnuth man, ghosting back, multi-critical. And what? A Chinese crew for both ships? Partially. The Chinese were, on this occasion, shipped as an experiment. They have been generally esteemed an arty and industrious as well as ingenious race of people. They live on fish and rice and, requiring but low wages, it was a matter also of economical consideration. Oh, economical. An old, old, sorry, an old, old, old owl says it was all about the otter, sea otters in water, pots and kettles for pelts, metal melts or oxidizes into air. Up and down the coast, Mears and Douglas trading, Dittidat, Coast Salish, New Chalnuth, Kwakwakawak, Heltsuk, Simshian, Haida, Lingit. Pots for pelts, markets for Canton system. British East India Company versus Koh Hong with Ho Po to collect taxes for Qing Emperor. 
and the 13 factories where it all went down, pelts for porcelain and tea for two, the global snowball already gathering steam. This is the house that Mears built, or rather his Chinese carpenters, the wood of our rather not. This is the cannon emplacement built by Chinese smiths, and for the water, a schooner, the Northwest America. This is the house that Douglas tore down, dishonoring the promise Mears made to New Chalnuth. Who built? Whose wood? Who forged? Whose metal? And later, who destroyed? Whose axe? Whose hammer? I've been working on the railway all the live long day. Sing a song for the wood and metal men who crossed the water east to get west to make the world go the other way round. Trade routes, contact of our always already, between the lines of which we might have become family. Britain versus America versus Spain spill crisis at Nootka, strain for colonial sovereignty. When Martinez beat out Mears, Douglas, Kendrick, Funter, where did the Chinese smiths and carpenters go? To San Blas as captured crew, to China, to death, or into hiding among the Coast Salish, Kwakwakawak, Chalnuth. The Qing, once self-sufficient, giving trade itself as gift, undone by opium. Iphigenia smoked out by the Treaty of Nanjing, my home on ceded land, recolonized by the master of all trades, trade. Water nurtures wood. Iphigenia crosses east to get west. Unseated Columbia calls in the ghosts. Calicum, Makina, Wikananish, Hana, Dituche, Komekela, Achon, Aching, aching for Earth's return. Another hand, another round of applause. Thank you, Larissa, and the fabulous soundscape artists.